Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Meryl uh, Knopf. Knopf. I always want to say that Knopf, but usually the K is silent. Meryl Knopf. He says he doesn't give a call sign. Oh, WW6AA. That's a pretty cool call sign. I like that. Um, Merrill says, I am still confused about the center conductor and shield on coax. When I started 50 years ago, the center of the cable was always hot. When I touched it, yeah, you get a nice shock. And the shield had no effect on me when I touched and RF was on the line because it's unbalanced and it's grounded. I thought the shield was connected to ground, should be. And any signal that went to ground was absorbed, sort of, no. Uh, does it make a difference which side of the coax is hooked up to my dipole or beam and why? Yes. Shouldn't the radiation from the hot end go further than the end connected to Earth? No. Uh, apologize for my stupidity. There's no such thing as a stupid question. The only stupid question is the one that is not asked, okay? It says, you have permission to hide my call. I, I don't see a reason to it, and let me tell you why. Um, I remember when I was first in amateur radio, I had a, had a question that just bothered the living daylights out of me, and the standard answer that was given, uh, which... I thought it was a joke, an inside joke, and I really needed to know the actual answer to the question. Well, I finally figured out that the joke answer was the real answer, but nobody took the time to explain that to me. So I treat all questions as sincere and will try to answer them, okay? Because while it may be clear to 90% of the other people, it's not clear to you and you're not stupid. So let's explain this because I'll just bet you there are other hams out there who have the same question, okay? Now before we jump into this, uh, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Jerry Moore, Victor Echo 7, Bravo Delta Mike, who is a recent new patron on patreon.com. You too can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. Now, let's take a look at the question where you've got when the current goes this way and it goes this way and this one and vice versa when it goes this way, it goes this way and this one. So they're sort of pulsing back and forth. This is balanced. You see you have the same current in each one. It's balanced. This works really well for like dipoles. This is a dipole on its side, okay, which are inherently balanced antennas. Okay, and this is the way it started out. Now, during the 19-teens and 1920s, Bell Labs was studying the problem of crosstalk, which is when you had the two wires, instead of being parallel, were actually twisted together and then right next to it would be another twisted pair, and you'd get crosstalk between the two. And they studied and studied and studied this problem, and somebody came up with the genius idea of why don't you take one of these lines and make the other line into a tube like this and put the other line inside. This was one of the greatest unsung um, realizations or ideas in radio, putting a wire inside another. Because what that does is, if we look at this right here, we're going to zoom down on this. This is a piece of LMR 400 coax. And let's take a look at the parts that are in here. This part right here is an outer braid. This outer braid is tinned copper. And this inner braid is aluminum. And this is a foil. 
that goes around this, not a braid, it's a foil. Okay, and you can see here that it goes all the way around. And you've got this foil, and so you've got two levels of braiding, which give you absolutely wonderful signal containment. Then there is an insulator here, and then the center conductor. In LMR 400, the center conductor is copper-coated aluminum. Now you say, wait a minute, copper and aluminum are not uh, good neighbors. They're dissimilar metals and you can get corrosion. That is if there is an electrolyte between them. And in here it's absolutely dry. There is no electrolyte between them. Even if you get a drop of water here, the copper shielding or the copper coating keeps it from getting to the aluminum. The only way you can tell it's aluminum is to look at this thing like end on and you can see that that's more shiny in there. Okay, so let's talk about what is going on here. What scientists discovered is that if you put, and the first um, there were spacers. It was air in the middle and there were spacers and this was copper pipe. And there were spacers in the middle to keep this thing uh, in place. This was very expensive. It was used for telephone transmission for many signals on one wire and so on. Okay, and it worked really well. Now here's what happens. You are correct that the outside is connected to ground over here. Okay, it's not necessarily connected to ground at the end near the antenna. It can be connected to ground right below the antenna if you want to. You ideally have no signal on the inside wall. It's all on this one. So this one goes back and forth while this one is ground. Okay, so if you want to attach this to a dipole, you should go through a one to one balance. Balanced to unbalanced. This is the un side, and this is the bal or balanced side, unbalanced. Okay, now a lot of people don't do that. What they do, and I am guilty of this because I've had good luck with it, I've never had good luck with balance, is you string up your coax and you put the copper shield on this side and you put the center conductor on this side. Now wait a minute, that's, un that's balanced to unbalanced. Yes, that's true. If you uh, have your transmitter down here, okay, that means that the reflected signal is going to travel on the outside of the coax. Okay, so you get some in this, you get some on the out. That can track all the way into the station. So let's look at this. The signal travels entirely inside the coax. And you've got a center conductor and this conductor. And if you connect this side to the dipole and the interior to the dipole, you're going to have an unbalanced to balanced. And in the dipole, the RF signal travels on the inside, on the inside of the shield. What happens in the, think of it this way, it's like Las Vegas. What happens in the coax stays in the coax. But this outer shield can also conduct RF. And when you do something unbalanced like that, it can put signal down into here. This is why people will make like loop, like nine turns, nine inch diameter of the coax. That's 25 feet worth of coax because that's kind of pricey, or you can get just put some little ferrite beads on it or whatever to keep that current from flowing any further, and then it's nicely balanced, or you can actually put in a one-to-one -one transformer balance if you want. 
Now, we are working at our F. So as I pointed out, the signal travels in the copper on the center conductor, so it's traveling on the outside of the inner conductor. It's traveling on the inside of the outer conductor, okay? That gets you all the way there. That means any coax you have here, you can intermingle this. You can tie knots in it. You can do anything you need to do because the signal's all inside the coax. Unless you get a little bit coming down the outside. And one way to get rid of that is just ground the outside of the coax before it goes into the shack. Usually with a... Um, a lightning arrestor like this one or something. You connect this to ground, these to ground. You see that's all metal all the way around, stainless steel. And that will keep the signal, uh, the outside of the shield from coming into your shack and probably improve your noise level too. Okay, so because this is grounded, it's an unbalanced line the signal travels here, but when you get up here, if you connect the two sides to each, you're going to get current flowing on the inside of the shield this way and on the outside of the inner conductor this way, and you get a balanced antenna. Now, it's easy to think of this in terms of household AC. In household AC, you've got the a black line is hot and the white line which I'm going to represent as orange here because white won't show up here I don't have a white marker on the white line is the neutral or the return now here we're implying that it acts like a current coming this way and this way the power goes to the load Okay, now, let me blow your mind. Remember, in RF, things are different. We've got RF energy that, given half a chance, is going to radiate. And it's going to radiate from either side of the dipole equally. Okay, and it doesn't matter which of these you connect to which side. It's going to radiate equally. Okay, where is the power? The actual energy that travels in this direction toward the antenna. Okay, it's actual energy traveling. Is it here? Is it here? Does it take those two to create it? The answer is that the energy energy travels in the uh, area surrounding the center conductor. The whole coax is filled with an RF field that is moving at the speed of light toward the antenna. The actual energy is inside the shield, but it encompasses all of this, except inside the inside piece here. So it travels in here, and there's something called the pointing vector. The pointing vector, okay? Now the pointing vector is the energy. Energy cannot travel faster than the speed of light, there are all kinds of fun you get into with waveguides, which are basically like coax, except there's no center conductor, but they will still take the energy out there. At the frequencies we deal with, we need the center conductor to work with this also. Okay, so that gives you more understanding of the coax. The coax contains all of the RF energy, power, voltages, currents, the impedance is the ratio of the voltage and current, and so on, and it's all kept inside this, which is very convenient to have it inside. It used to be that hams almost always 
uh, used uh, open wire line. And now uh, we use this because after World War II, there was a lot of this that was surplus and people used it. It was usually RG8. This right here is LMR 400, which is a big improvement over RG8. Also more expensive. Okay, so there you have it. That's what happens inside a coax. A lot goes on inside the coax, and what goes on inside the coax stays inside the coax. That's why we love coax so much. What happens in a parallel transmission line is that the energy actually surrounds the transmission line. So if you've got pieces of metal in the way, it'll suck energy off of the thing, okay? So Merrill, there you have it. I hope that helps understand the coax is almost magical. It's uh, something that's readily available. It keeps the signal inside so you can run multiple coaxes together out through the same hole in the wall to get to the outside. You can bring them all to the ground together and put the lightning arresters right next to each other like I do. And uh, it keeps everything in there. It is an unbalanced feed. And so if you take it directly to a balanced feed like many do, at some point in there, you're going to get a little current on the outside of the coax. So you want to shunt that to ground uh, wherever you can. But when you get into RF, uh, you're starting to talk about electromagnetic fields. And remember that an electromagnetic field is a superset of circuit theory. Circuit theory just explains a few of the little things for wires connected together. Electromagnetic field theory talks about the transmission of everything from uh, 60 hertz electricity or 50 all the way up to light and beyond. They're all electromagnetic waves. And you can think of them as, you know, a coax pipe is like a pipe for photons, whatever. But um, it's easiest to think of it uh, as waves uh, when we're, we're dealing with it. When you get up to light, it's more useful sometimes to think of it as photons. Uh, photons and waves are interchangeable um, and they carry the same amount of energy. It's just two ways of talking about the same thing. Okay? So if I haven't confused you completely, I'll just say there you have it. And uh, if you have listened this far in the video, maybe you'd like to subscribe. And I'd appreciate you doing that. You can also go to decastlercom slash support for a way to support this video that works for you. And until we next meet, 73.